shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, I am here. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. And what a beautiful day it is as we join our hearts to spend time with God here on Moments of Inspiration. I am Deaconess Amber Cesar High Payne, currently attached to the Claxton Bay Pastoral Region. On this morning's episode of Moments of Inspiration, we join with the UN Women's Call for 16 Days Activism Against Gender-Based Violence. This campaign is intended to raise awareness about gender-based violence and the advocates for the prevention and elimination of violence against girls and women. This year's theme is Unite! Activism to End Violence Against Women and Girls. This morning, Reverend Sanya Bihari from the Guayco Pastoral Region will be leading us through today's meditation. We are also joined with Ms. Sharon Paul from the Marabella Bonadventure Pastoral Region, sharing her God-gifted talent with us in worship. I invite you now to join with me in prayer. God who created us in your image and likeness, we praise and honor you with all of our heart, souls, and mind. All that is good comes from you. For you created us in love and harmony, but we destroy your creation with violence. We hurt those who have called us to protect and to care for. So Lord, we ask that you fill us with your power through the word through which the word gives. And Lord, inspire our hearts through this worship today. Be with us, Lord, we pray. Amen. The grace of God is reached for me. Pulled me from the raging sea And I am safe on the solid ground The Lord is my salvation I will not fear when darkness falls His strength will help me scale these walls I'll see the dawn of the rising sun the Lord is my salvation
my salvation Who is like the Lord our God Strong to save faithful in love My debt is paid and the victory Lord is my salvation. Today's scripture reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 to 6. I invite you to read with me now from Holy Scripture as I read from the New Revised Standard Version. Let us listen to the Word of God. It is entitled, Restoration After Exile. Woe to the shepherds who destroyed and scattered the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of the flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall no longer fear or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 1, verses 76 to 79. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from the high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. And oh, my soul so weary When troubles come And my heart burden be Then I am still And wait here in the silence Until you come And sit a while with me You raise me up so I can stand 
Good morning, everyone. I invite you to join me for a word of prayer. Let us pray. God of Abraham and Isaac, God of Rachel and Leah and Sarah, we are so grateful that your word comes to us through the ages, through men and women, your prophets and your priests and your kings, and that we have it here today to delve into, to have guidance for the way in which we live our lives. We ask, O oh God, that you come now and shed your light upon our scriptures and our proclamation that we truly take it into our hearts and let it transform us. And to this end, silence in us any voice but your own. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our living Lord, our Redeemer, our friend. Amen. Friends, today is an in-between day in several celebrations across the world in which we understand the need for us to be active, to be activists, to be advocates, to be a people who are interested in the rights and responsibilities that we have in this world. On the 19th of November, we would have marked World Men's Day. On the 20th of November, we would have celebrated International Children's Day. And one that is not so much a celebration, but a call to activism begins on the 25th of November, later this week, as we begin 16 days of activism against violence against women and girls. This begins on that international day against violence against women. And it ends on December 10th, which is Human Rights Day. It helps us to get into that mindset that men, women, children are all human. Men, women, and children should have those same protected rights and ability to live in this world free from harm and violence. And when we specifically say that we call for an end to violence against girls and women, it is because there is special need for us to look at this particular subset of humanity and to advocate for their safety, for growth, for development, for education, to have a home, to have marriage or not have marriage, to be a people who are able to walk the streets safely, whether day or night. And so today I ask us to think about our role now as those advocates in the world. Now, you may not think the word advocate is in scripture, apart from when we talk about the Holy Spirit as that advocate before the Lord. But we could also think of advocacy in terms of us being a prophetic voice in the world. You see, prophets have this immensely important role in society and not just religious life, but all of life. Prophets have the responsibility to speak God's word as God's agent in the world. So whether it's economics or society or politics or what's happening in our ecology, prophets are blessed with God's word to speak it into the world. Especially they are called to speak that truth, God's truth to people in positions of power. And that's because those are the persons that often have the ability to make change, lasting change. Today, we think about what the prophet Jeremiah tells us from Jeremiah chapter 23. Now, Jeremiah indeed was the weeping prophet, a sorrowful prophet who saw the ways in which his people went wrong, who saw the ways in which his leaders went wrong and truly lamented what it resulted in for their people. He recognized that his leader's actions created great inequality. His leader's actions would have caused God's sheep to be lost and taken advantage of. And so when he begins this portion of scripture, we hear him saying, woe to the shepherds. Woe, God's condemnation upon all those who were given that responsibility of leaders and yet let the flock scatter. Let the flock be taken advantage of by the wolves. Let the flock 
have its ill and its young not taken care of. And he's speaking not just to their political leaders, but he's speaking to their religious leaders as well. Because you see, friends, in the same vein that we have prophets speaking truth, we also have false prophets, persons who will tell the world what it wants to hear, who will tell even leaders what they want to hear, make them feel good about themselves, rather than truth. And that is one of the marks truly of a prophet, that they speak truth, no matter who it is that they're speaking God's word to. So they're not speaking their own truth. They're not speaking the truth that that king or that queen needs to hear, but they're speaking God's word to them. We also hear about a prophecy spoken by Zechariah who is the father of John the Baptist. And he did not believe the role that his son would play in this world. He did not believe that his wife in her older age could even become pregnant. And because of his unbelief, he is struck dumb. But when the child is born, he regains his voice and he uses it in a song and speaking these prophetic words into the world. And I want to read it for you once more as it comes to us from Luke chapter 1. You, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. This portion of scripture is so beautiful. It is a prophecy about a prophet who reminds the child, even as he is just coming into existence, that he is the prophet of the Most High. That as prophets, we do not speak for ourselves, but as prophets, we make the way for the Messiah. And the Messiah, Jesus is the Messiah, not us. He also reminds the child that you are to give knowledge of salvation to God's people. And salvation is one of those very churchy words we say a lot and don't always think about what it means. You see that word salvation and to put it more simply, God save us, the way in which God saves us and interacts with us also has to do with God healing us and God restoring us. Whether we are broken in body or mind or spirit, or whether we are broken as a community, that we are shattered. And as I read that call for this prophet to speak and proclaim salvation that is coming through the Messiah, not himself, I think about the ways in which violence has broken us apart as a community. We think about the many, many hundreds of lives lost to gun violence. We think about the lives, thousands of lives lost to COVID-19. We think about the lives lost by women right in their own homes because of their spouses and others who are supposed to love them. We think about the violence that women face just on the roads as they travel in taxis, violence through words, violence through action. And we think about the way that that fragments us as a society. And so we wonder if women should be locked away and kept safe. We wonder if we should start teaching men how to respond differently in the world not to respond to rejection or anger through that physical violence and other forms of violence. We wonder about what we teach our children as they see that violence happening between the adults and their lives. And they too decide to end a fight in school by picking up a knife. And we see the ways that that has fractured our society through the lack of trust, and just that insecurity we have as we exist. Friends, on this last Sunday, before we enter the month of December, it will also be the time as a church when we start a new year. 
it will be the day we begin Advent. Advent to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. There is always hope. This insecurity and this fear that we live in now because of the immense violence that surrounds us will come to an end. We will be healed and restored. There is a light coming to us in the darkness. It will be like a dawn on a new day. That is the promise of the Messiah. And so today I ask you to be a prophet in your own world, to know the truth of God's word that calls us to live in peace with each other, to not take advantage of each other, and especially for those who are in leadership, to go that extra mile to ensure that the atmosphere you create in your spaces is one where there is safety and there is dignity for all. And as we now use our voices in those ways, we will see the change happening. Change not because of us, but the one who fuels us, our Messiah, the soon coming Savior King. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. have learned something new today from that comforting and inspiring message brought to us by Reverend Sanya Bihari. We here at PCTT are a part of the Thursdays in Black campaign that encourages advocacy towards a world free from rape and violence. So we want to invite you to share the inspiration to join this global campaign. All it requires is that we wear black on Thursdays that we wear a pin signifying that we join in solidarity to end rape and violence. 
and that we use our voices on our social media to speak out against any form of violence. Too many of our sisters and brothers have been taken from us. Too many mothers and fathers are grieving their lost children, many living right here in Trinidad and Tobago. They need to know that there is a way out of doubt and fear that threatens to overcome. So let us help each other. As we come to the end of our program today, we extend a most sincere thank you to each and every one of you for worshiping with us today. We thank you, Ms. Sharon Paul, for your music and ministry that has truly been a blessing on this morning's episode. We also take this opportunity to say thank you to one of our sponsors, Ms. For Signature Events, that generously provided our lovely set here on Moments of Inspiration. Friends, if you have been blessed by this devotion this morning and would like to share it with those online, I invite you to head over to our YouTube page, Presbyterian Church Trinidad and Tobago, where you can find all of our episodes, or you can follow us on other social media platforms. You can find us on Facebook at Moments of Inspiration and on Instagram using the handle Presbyterian Church TT for clips and snippets of inspiration throughout the week. If you would like to find out more about the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago, please feel free to visit our website at www.pctt.org.tt. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. I leave you now with today's moment of inspiration. We unite our voices to speak truth to power.